I've never seen your food here. Oh, Just a minute. Can you see? Yes, I can. It's beautiful. Look at that. Come on, come on. Wow. Oh. I've never seen that bird here. Koto et te whanau. it's the Topo Moana record keepers here. You're with Perry Fletcher, Jeffrey Addison, and Faitama Te Whare. We are on uh, January the 31st, 2022, about to go up to Toki Road. Well, as long as I've got my whiskers combed, <laughs> my voice is uh, lucid. We are at the uh, top end of uh, Te Toki Road. Uh, to Tokyo Road, we're looking a long, long stretch. It's been a few years since I've seen wild deer running across the road, the forest. This has all been former forest. It's uh, crown owned land, and uh, yeah, Dawaraki pastoral are the uh, present uh, users of it. In the distance, we've got uh, a prominent in this whole, whole uh, area is the Kaimanawa Hill. And when we left it, the uh, talking rural Huata made reference to the hill and the sleeping cave there, Rangi Patoto, the big chief who, uh, who dominated all, all lands from Marake Kroko right through to Aratiatia. Rangi Patoto was the son of uh, Tarama. Tarama's um, in the ancestor, but uh, it's uh, Rangi Patoto who's buried on top of this hill, Kaimanawa. Kaimanawa has uh, been involved with the uh, blast lot of fellas and, um, and har harvesters up, up there. But the only remains now, because you've got a translator on top of that hill, and um, they're cursed uh, things that they can uh, lay havoc, it was just a part of a terrace and a defensive terrace that's on the left side. That's about all, all that's left of the old earthworks that once uh, dominated the uh, top top of that hill. Uh, we're going now down uh, to Toki Road, and for many years it was tar sealed right to the top before uh, just uh, around for the corner, and and after that we're on to Mori Land. Uh, with the reference to uh, the caves at uh, Ruahuata, the big cave on the other side, was where Rahu Rahu. Of, uh, of the Ngāti Rokawa uh, came and then he revisited with an army, a war party and um, so when we're at the top we'll stop again and then we'll connect the narrative regarding Rahu Rahu and, and the, um, and the uh, changing of the social history for the Māori of the area. So, and behind us uh, is the old, uh, is the old um, camp for the road makers, they had a road makers camp. So that area has been set and still used as a little side uh, reserve to this bay. Oh. The local uh, Maori uh, created a wetland behind it and uh, there was a, a dead dedication for this opening. Tahara in the distance, and you see the quarry site. The quarry. Oh on my the, God! Uh, bottom, and these are these stones could come from that quarry. That's just uh, giving you um, that's just giving you an idea. And there's, um, now from here, from here, we see those tall trees on the left. We've got those uh, tall growing trees left, they're on solid rock, rock uh, prominences, but it's uh, past there in the line that uh, to more close to the road at the forest edge we've got put aside is the Māori, old, old Māori Urupa at the foot there, but inland to the right there's a clear space and that's where Rahu Rahu kept his war party while he went inland 
uh, kind of right across the river, uh, this side of the river, at the corner, and that's where he uh, confronted uh, Waihuka, who was setting up his uh, nets. Waihuka was Ngāti uh, Whāua uh, chief, and uh, Waihuka, the next day Rahu Rahu came, and that's when he killed uh, Waihuka and put his body in the waka Waihuka had for getting his nets and, and uh, uh, trapping the uh, Tatuki saw it because their big pa was at Tatakapo, a big band corner of the headland. That was the principal pa. And, and coming round the headland, and the people realised the war party was on its way. And why I had uh, Rahu Rahu on, on signal to his army, his uh, war party, uh, came across here and they pursued the Maori right through to the Pyra Range and finally over toward uh, Rainbow Mountain. And that's when, uh, that's when a, um, a group, another war party, came and uh, Rahu Rahu himself was killed at that a action. But it all started from here. But where we end up at, uh, at uh, Rake Rako, one of the meeting houses there in the late 1800s is called Rahu Rahu. And the sub tribe, a hapu, hapu there was called Rahu Rahu. But the only lands their descendants has, had were on this block this block and no, no, nowhere else connected with uh, Araka, uh, Karaka and, and the burial places. But down down the road here, we'll just uh, at the corner, there's a Mariah meeting house and uh, that's uh, just uh, down to end by the corner and that meeting house was uh, uh, in Mariah's, a recent one and that's, um, they call it Tatuki Mariah, but it's named after Tarama, the ancestor meeting house itself and that's the one I just spoke to recently and had it filmed and recorded so the people, the local people of the history. And I talked also about how the salt land behind us was all acquired by, by, by the Crown, the Crown and, uh, and uh, the history and involvement there. So uh, the reservation struck that was left acquiring the bulk of the land 40,000 odd acres behind us 1930 was um, uh, saw the people completely re relocated, loss of the uh, places, and it's only the Urupa, the Urupa that was able to try and identify and put, put aside from uh, forestry, farm, and, and uh, development. And uh, most of it's done, but unfortunately, the places and sites and all places have um, been all, all, all lost with the uh, with the. Uh, Crown turning it to uh, perpetual forests into uh, pine forests of subsequent times. And 4,000 acres for the privilege was taken out from the Maori who didn't want the sales um, by, by the Crown, too. So, this Tahukuri block, about the bulk of it, 40,000 acres, is Tahukuri A1, and A2 is the 4,000 acres. It's going over to our head here. And the reservation strips all broken up in sections A, 15, 16, etc., and mostly into 100, 100 acre lots. So the people now can only relate to their history, their land, and that from 1930 and type titles from there, there on. So they've been compulsorily dispossessed of their customary land and use and history. Uh, yes, that's um, a big par there. There was another par further around about a, um, or less than a mile further, and that par was built by um, Tutamahuta and Chitinapa. Really? Yes. What's, what's the par? Jeffrey, come closer so that we can hear you. What's, what's the name of the par that you're talking about now? What's its name? Uh, sorry, I didn't Just get it wrong. I've, I've written it. I've written it down to, um, Upata Aho, H O U, Upata Aho, Aho. Te Upata Aho, Aho. The new, the new Ho. coming out. And so the principal big pa going way back was the headland pa, narrow headland pa here, and all the features in that 
thanks to Historic Places Trust and the trustees and that, everything's been lost, bulldozed and no more than paddocks now. Church, burial grounds, old trenches, everything else, all gone, all gone. I was just a voice in the wilderness. Can't stop the dollar thing. And there's a whole lot that could be the best preserved sites and reserves. You could even from aerial photos see the big ditches that one some stood. But um in place there. But the one downstream was built by uh, Tuta Mahuta and Tutetapa, Nati Tuta. And what's that part called? He that just told you. And that so that must have been built in the 19th century? Uh, no, no, early, early, very early part of the 19th century. And that was to, that was when uh, Tahal, this is how early it is, Tahal, who it was his grandfather, who was, um, they threatened to kill, and uh, to come and kill and attack, and also um, Takiri, the principal man here, Takiri, that none of the locals seem to know now when I mention it to you from Rai because you can get footage of that tape, it's marvellous and, um, and, and so, so to uh, protect one and the other they combined because at that time Nati, um, the, uh, the uh, lake Ruta Nairo was all occupied by Nati Tahu and the loss and the link the amount of Tuta Mahuta with all their funny whiz bang Lenny Johns with his uh, books and everything else and that a uh, great lot of photos and everything else but they ancestrally and that this this uh, this is why it's lost the wider link and connections and Takiri was connected with uh, to pr give protection and, and mana uh, he, he was uh, his, his mana was his connection with our Tarangita. So, so just back, back up the horses a little bit, I have to um, ask some questions about the Tutetapa Waitahanui. Yes. So they were all working together, and um, Tutetapa Tutemohuta were working together to to create other marae such as this one you've just talked about. This, was a, this wasn't a marae, this was a defensive thing to stop a war party onslaughts that they were vulnerable by themselves down at Waitanui. This is when I, I, I sometimes say, protecting two for each other, protecting different groups. The one that was once held had the connections that went all, all, all the way down. So, um, so when you said Rotongai, or the lagoon, um, the people who once had mana whenua were there were Ngāti Tahu. Were their chiefs and their people. As opposed to Ngāti Tūte Mohuta. That Tūte Mohuta, 1800, they, they never existed as a hapu. Early 1800s, they, it was only then they started with they, uh, through, um, and, and, and through um, Tahel's, uh, Tahel's uh, grandfather that, uh, that they only became a hapu because Pohepa Tamamutu, hence its connection with our Tuta Mahuta in the present day Mariah and the namings after. I've got photos of the old people sitting outside on the porch there, all black and white photos and all this with the camera. And, um, and so that's where, that's where they were able to get a foothold at the area we call Waitanui, mainly living at uh, Opepe, but they came from the Runanga and the Runanga and that's their area. So they're very, very late. Yes, these people, but the fabrication of the treaty industry, they've locked into Tarangita to get a credible book and, and, and a firm place. But Ohepa Tamamutu. Are you talking about the book to Tamamutu? Yes. Is that what it's referencing? And, and without that, they'd have no book or no history or anything else. They've just uh, gone on past someone else's uh, coattails, completely ignorant of the real histories, the real connections. And, and the fact that it was shock horror, you know, they came to Hapu and New Tuta Mahuta came and built a, uh, a, 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 a palisade, uh, a, a, a path, a path down, down here, just uh, less than a mile downstream from uh, Takapa, uh, from uh, Takapao, which was the old ancient headland path that he, Tirama, occupied. So in the old days, Tutetapa and Tutemaruta worked together, so they weren't working, they were working as one. 
and today, 2022, who's at each other's throats? Isn't that silly, needless? Okay. Explain, who is at each other's throats? You've got the different groups now, and what annoy. You're getting a divisions and you're getting uh, disagreements on, among each other and, and the families. That's it today. As I say, you go back, and I could tell 50 years ago, where's, what's all the, by themselves, they wouldn't last five minutes, and it was cooperation, and cooperation with the people here, their power and, and that, and both were being threatened, both were being threatened at the one time, so you combine forces to ward off a, a common, a common foe. And that's what needs to happen in 2022, because there's still a common foe and they're massing, they're massing up at Pariwaka in their new flat houses, ready to sweep down the hill and overrun Tute Mohuta and Tute Te Whā. And only, uh, and only us more of the same mentality, and anyone who approaches them, they're just told uh, to uh, expect of um, terms off. So, it's, um, so this is why I found, right from the 1950s, a certain disconnect, uh, uh, discontent has lingered and been passed down unnecessarily in ignorance of their own history. Uh, so this is this is why, what has this got to do with Waitaha Nui? What has this got to do with uh, Tutamahuta and that? Well, could you just explain to us? Explain the common time. And, and it's very important and it does show historically how close the two hapus were and that hundred or two hundred years later look where they are where they where it's come to of you know politics of and, division and, 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 and through and through Tahau trying to get fifty acres of land and seen unfavourably by the courts because he sided with Tikuti against the Crown. The ones that like uh Parahapi got rewarded Oh here's ten thousand acres. A Tahau oh we'll give you fifty acres. Be content with that. And this is the dispossession and the unfairness that's filtered on through into the hearts and minds of, of his descendants to this day. Mm. So when I'm, when I'm talking about the rights of the people and occupation, it's, uh, it's where I'm making a stand against others, but then I, I get the overlaps, the combinations and the working and, and that, that uh, and the cooperation for their, everyone's survival at one time. Especially when the time the musket period uh, took took uh, place, it's, um, so that's uh, that's uh, sort of at this vantage point here. If you can follow the outline of the river, the snakes around and um, it, it bends around the rows of uh, trees, and that, that's the Waikato River. We're not quite at the vantage point of seeing it, but between there and this marae here, to to Marae, uh, you got you got another little. Uh, piece coming out of the river and that was the principal cultivation place and that's where they they brought in kits of the kukumai and, um, and uh, prepared and baked oh. it and uh, made ovens and that to uh, prepare and make it. And these were sourced so, from I... Rua Hoata? Uh, no, these were a sourced from another local source. You had little pockets of, of kukumai from the former thermal areas and so another local source so they expertly took it and Tutoki was a place in common and I hope to uh, locate some of the uh, storage bits there, yeah, still uh, locate, locate that. Can you just explain please why they baked and prepared the kokowai? You get kokowai, it's yes. like that, yes. put on yourself, it sticks to your clothes and then oh great great, a couple of washes it's gone. Okay. And they as the industrial chemists they do uh, not only preparing it, but it had to be baked and rebaked and baked almost to hard, hard chocolate yes. qualities and uh, to be used for registry. The process took about two months, two months, and, and they had to mix a certain proportion of oil, preferably they found the best oil was shark oil, and give it a permanent binding, a bind, binding um, adhesion that it could dye all the flax, the cloaks and everything else and it was highly prized and valuable as I think I said before that uh, the very, a big source was at uh, Mungakaka Ramea it's just outside of us 
uh, going toward Rotorua and, um, and it was taken to Hawke's Bay and traded by the Kahununu for uh, greenstone. I was so prized they gave greenstone branches and tools and slabs for uh, cocoa wire. It was all prepared from here and, and, um, and, uh, and that uh, rain, Rainbow Mountain. So that links up our visit to now where are we off to? We are going now, we're going to go bye bye round the corner, it's Turkey Marae. It was only built in about 1962 and then we're going down the road uh, toward uh, Apati and I'll point out another uh, pa there, important uh, pa at the time of uh, Pākehiri and then through Ohaki itself and, um, and then on our way to um, to uh, to to, to cow. So, but it's all important because this connects where I left off with the uh, Rainbow Delta in the cave and, and where Rahu Rahu after his visit brought in a war party to uh, come come through here in the district and that's given the layout of the present main uh, Marae and uh, people from from there. Okay pages regarding the block and block history to the, um, the uh, people in connection with land and the dispossession of much of the land to the Crown. So that's part of our journey, Tuckapal, Tuckapal block, and um, which uh, was um, rise up just to the side. The land here, this land here in Tituki Road, it was unsealed road, and the tar seal stopped where the Crown land, land uh, up the top of the corner. And I worked, uh, I worked meetings with the uh, local mayor and others and, um, and uh, legal people and for 30 years they tried to get um, get the roads upgraded and they were all turned down because it was on Maori land and private uh, Maori road line so 30 years I appealed transport departments and others and then they asked me to get involved well within uh, about six months the whole thing were overturned and the uh, council agreed to immediately allocate so much money and to get it upgraded with the future in the future to be tar sealed, which it is today. There's, um, now with that, in, in the result of the meeting, we had a meeting here and one Murray objected because that corner was too sharp and they had to take off 90 square metres of that corner up the top. 90 square metre, uh, I was, uh, well, might have been, um, it might have been the valuation. That's right, a person objected. Oh, we're losing land, losing land. And they couldn't see in their heads that if the land was going to be taken off a corner, it would be replaced on the other side. It was uh, apples for apples. And so in the end, we asked about the valuation of it and it was put at $90. And they're making so much of fuss, they're going to lose land. And they couldn't see that they'd, the same land would just be one side to the other that I, I felt like writing there, going up to them, writing a $90 check to shut them up because they're turning down a multi-million dollar future road upgrade in that. This is how people, they, they all press over little minor things that are not an issue at all. And, and, so, uh, and so that was uh, approved. And then immediately, within I think the first week, the graders started coming in. Nowadays, you've got the Tar Seal Road. What I do for these people here, not a bit of it. I knew if they had to change the legislation regarding Maori road lines, it would apply to all the Maori road lines and private roads in the region. Why over you? over there, there's a thermal area, thermal hot pool, and that's where they uh, cooked uh, Kerua, the, oh, yeah. the one with the leader of the war party, and they've named a stream after. And he was going to, uh, he, he was confident he was going to do, do away with the Tawa. But so yeah, that's just. Is butcher's pool? Um, no, butcher's pool is. Um, and is um, yes, you go into Reparo some so miles he, away. He was, he was eaten and cooked in there, you mean? Um, yeah, that was his uh, cooking the pool, cooking pool. But, um, and there was a big, um, there was a big uh, ancient storage pit. And it was used for generations after that. And Takiri was uh, one of one of the last uh, to use it. Takiri. Takiri. 
and the very ancient people here, all, all pre-tribal people, we were coming up here, hunter-gatherer people, exploring the river, and um, and so I, I tried to get that set aside, set aside, and it's planted now, as you see, and we just stop here. And they've done our plantings all, 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 all throughout. Can we go down there? We can go down there. See this headland here? That has been used and reused from the first hunter-gatherer people ever come up the river here. When uh, Geoffrey says nice place to land a walker, the first people that came and they established themselves on that little corner. And it's a similar corner as we, as some very similar to where we were at, uh, at Tokoroa. Little corner there, un undefended. Uh, later centuries it became defended. In contemporary times, they put up a new fortification and, uh, during uh, the threat against Tikuti until the soldiers that were camped for a while at Ohaki down the road uh, persuaded them to come into Taupo. But they were quite confident that their uh, fortification could ward off. And the place is named after an ancestor, and Parkiri was one of them. And there was a big storage pit they used for generations, generation after generation. And the kumara never rotted in there, never, never rotted. It went mouldy in, in, in there. So we got all the history and connections and between the names of the, um, that, uh, like that cooking pool. And on the other side of the bridge, the day the, day the bridge was open, I was with uh, Taxi Kapua. Nui Kapua, and then he had to go and because he was the uh, elder to attend and, um, and uh, dedicate the opening of the new bridge behind us and so that, that, uh, that uh, so took another cr cross, cross road part. Uh, that's a place where they had the uh, stalls and that for people to come and have picnics on and someone just went and stole it. You do these things for the locals to benefit everyone and I get, get abused, you know, we plant native trees and more people come and pinch them so they get replaced and that. But this is a planted out area and one of the foremost uh, people foremost is, uh, with the groups and that is people like Evelyn that you met. And uh, so she, she was all uh, mind, mindful of, uh, of that. And There's nothing here that indicates it's a reserve, hey, no names, no signs. Well you don't need the names because this is this has been all set aside as reserve. Is it a Maori reserve or a public reserve? Uh, that's um, I'm not sure the status because all this is Maori land way back. All all the strip right through the Ohaki Power Station, all that, all that side of um, Ohaki Tower is is um, is all, all all Maori land, all all right through to and past that the Takapau land block. Certain areas have certain statuses, and I doubt they put public picnic tables if it was private land. If you know what I mean. Mm. No, no, it's part of the uh, part part of Murray land was uh, put aside for reserve yeah. for use of the public, right. and uh, to share. And all the planting that's it's all been done by um, Evelyn and the groups and teams oh, and that. Yeah. All the planting and every everything else. So, um, so going back there at that place. And all the oldest sites were um, were uh, Mare Island obsidian, no local uh, 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 Kinloch obsidian, and that's an indication of its very earliest ancient use. And there was um, some of the earthworks and that for later times have been hit and modified, and the cutting up of tree a tree for firewood. And I gave the explanation of the tree, and I was assured it wouldn't be touched, and they went and chopped it up for firewood. But uh, we've got the history, the name of the tree and everything else. So I still have a wide knowledge of the area. But this is a, as I say, it's a multi-period thing from times hunter-gatherers and a gathering meeting place, the first planting of the Kumara, and later times uh, people like Takiri, he then started using the introduction of potatoes and, and corn and, and different things uh, himself. So we've, um, yes, 
So I thought we'd stop here just to get a familiar that little headland that swing around a sharp little bend and uh, Titoki is a lesser one but again that, that was favoured uh, that was uh, favoured uh, from people in the past in a big sharp headland on high rises was used as fortifications and cultivations and, um, and everything in between and later a, a church was um, was uh, built there was, um, so I thought we'd just stop here just as a break you go on the map and you've got the bridge you've got the bridge and all this right through is all, all, all Maori land right right through through, uh, through here and on that, that side Buried them so far down that it's hard to pull out. Well, yeah, I think there is a couple of bags under each one. Ooh, this looks exciting. So is this all contact energy land we go? No, all Maori land, but contact's got the, uh, all the um, thing oh, go to the right here, some. right here, right. Yeah. No trespassing private roads, a good thing you're with me, eh? Yeah. That's yeah. where you find things you wouldn't normally... Um, private people, so. I'm sure we have Ngāti Tahu in our whakapapa oh, somewhere. Sure. I've got my Tahu, that's pretty similar. Well, I've got my tahu, but um, it's completely separate. I thought you were Rangitani. Rangitani, but my tahu. Rangitani is not my tahu, is it? I know the difference. The They're difference, from the north. The difference are uh, from the uh, Taranaki. You were running away from Te Rokura. The Rangitani has got uh, the older links because my tahu came from Bay of Plenty. Yes. They originate from Tauranga. Yes. That, that's us. We went from there to Kahungunu. We dropped off a lot of people there and then we went down. And yeah, wasted all the Waitaha people. That's how we established ourselves. But isn't it funny, eh, how the conquering tribe tries to kind of rewrite history and make out as if, you know... Now all of this, all of this has been knocked up, knocked back, knocked back, knocked back over the years. That's beautiful though, look at that. Must be a few frogs in there. All this has been built up to stop the encroachment. I was overrun, all this could have been protected inland of us. But, um, but they got world experts to come and advise, advise uh, to um, what could be done and everything else. And they gave completely the wrong advice, of course. And now, now you've got the encroachment here. That was all dry land here, all dry land. And that's been the encroachment from uh, the lake, uh, the uh, river rather. And we could have easily uh, had, had that bypass. Is this the river? That's the Waikato River. Oh shit! I didn't realise it got so gummed up. Oh. It, it, it is. We had to be way out to that clump of tree and narrow river, and so all the old place has been taken up and swallowed up. And um, as I say, they got world experts to uh, be responsible for a lot of this. That we should be way up here, and, and the river easily bored and diverted. So, so You've got on the other side. No, this isn't reclaimed land. This is land that's been subject to encroachment through on both sides, with the um, bit of uh, subsidence from the uh, geothermal. This doesn't feel natural, though. This road. This feels bad. Oh, this is a recent one. A, Farm, farm on the other side, swatted up paddocks, still remains, see remains of old fences. 
It's literally a mile on the other side walk to the road. I know because I've walked it. Well, this is definitely Now, a, stop, head stop here. Oh, way either side. Are we going turning around? Um, yeah. Yeah, we can't go any further anyway. No, keep oh, going, oh, keep we going. Keep going down this way. So are there tumbles and things around here, big big holes and um all, all no the power people built it up all, all, all this. Oh, well, this is a private road. Oh, uh, well, it's a road. This is, um... Oh, it's got places set aside there, fenced off for Urupa over there. And if we had we stopped before, we could have shown you the fertility rock. I'd love to see the fertility rock. How far back? Uh, that 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 was uh, that was when we um, oh, had yeah, that siding and yeah. mm. let's go and have a look, eh? Because we might get pregnant. Well, you can turn around here. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna go go yeah, just uh, go 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 um, go down a bit. I've got an area there. See, it juts out a bit. That's all all fenced off. It's an Urupa. Do they have I names think. these Urupa, or are they just uh, if I Urupa? if I have to relocate them, I'm not giving names on my head. For the sake of it, was part of a much wider area area of activity. Well, I think that was uh, two graves, two grave sites there. I've seen a picture of the fertility rock that you you gave me um, A to Z or Z. Just turn around here, anywhere. Oh, there's another one. Yes, it is. This is uh, Tahu Matua. This is the first one. This is a Tahu Matua. Well, and not a single Ahika house. Eh? No, no. They, they, they have had them. They have had them. They, know, they come and go. I feel it's so sad when I just see a marae. Mm. A yeah, building yeah. is just a shell without people to... They have crowds of people here. This is used all the time. In big, big way, big, big way. Yeah, but there's no one living here. No, are they going to isolate their children from school buses, school routes, work, everything else? Power accommodation link. People come and go, as I say. But people now, the modern Maori now, have a practical way of being connected to these places, but staying at their houses, staying at their homes, and their um, blocks up the road. In the old days, the Whare Nui was the place where the chief lived. In the old days, that's where you took the people, the visitors, first. And it still works in some countries I've been to. If you go into a small village, you get taken to meet the chief in the chief's house. And I thought, well, that's so mouldy. But of course, with colonisation and Whare Nui and Whare Kai coming to mean something completely different to what they used to mean, it was the house where the chief and his family lived. At one time, this place would be completely de de deserted. They'd all be at Rocky Krako. Or yeah. They'd all be at other places. Seasonal. And my grandfather told me at uh, Mihi one time, the place was completely deserted. No, no one around to stop here. So that rock in there is the first Trinity rock, is it? Yes. Well, just we go there. A photo I think I gave you, there was no vegetation, clear view to the more modern tower in the uh, dis distance. And one time we had to have gum boots for the encroachment of the river, gum boots to come. And I was with uh, Cedric uh, Forrest one time, and I got in through the blackberry and that, and then I threw him the gum boots that he could come and follow me. <laughs> and yet this was under a, a Maori tribal land trust and for year after year they just neglected everything and that was another grievance I had if your responsibility 
I showed one of the trustees the order, never even read their own trust order responsibilities. See, Jeffrey, Jeffrey thinks, oh, because it's there and that's your responsibility, things are done. And the reality was that the tribal trust ignored all these places that had got so overgrown you couldn't see them. And this is the sort of thing with the blackberry and that that wants to um, just... Um... But before we were walking way, way down, way down here, and it got all, all, uh, all the water was coming in. So all this has been built up in the road and that after the fact, but around to um, keep and uh, protect it. But the trouble was it's it got caught between the Marae group and the, and the Lands Trust and between the two they weren't um, communicating much with each other. Well that's just what happens. So this used to be or still is a fertility that's rock. That's a fertility so rock. Nasty Tahu people. Well, me if you give a suitable wahini to uh, show her the way. <laughs> right. We don't want any more children, do we? If I tell no, you. I don't. Well, I had someone proposed to me the other day, and I said, oh, and then said, then we can get divorced. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to marry you to get divorced. What's the point? What's the point? I saw Marty Tahu at one time in the awards, and he was completely unaware that outside his own little strip, at a few houses, they, they were ever, ever there. That was a deep disconnect. So nothing to do with um, with education or any, anything else. It was just took one generation to disconnect them, take away the title from the land. And that's it. That's why Maori's going to burn well, cars or get no, rid of old cars or stick them on blocks. See, I objected these stones being put here. They were going to do great things. So you ship the stones sort of a critical marker and I dealt with a trustee, and that's as far as I've heard. Pull up here by the sign. No history of all places and things around here. Why? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It could mean that we don't have the <laughs> Very corrosive. Get some modern wire steel and that and leave it for a year or two and you can just break it up in your hands. None of this area here was suitable for growing, of course, but um, they was either Tapati where we were or further down another another uh, head, headland, a place called Tahuna Atara. Tahuna Atara. Mm -hmm.